G'day folks, uh, this is a video that I shot for supporters through the week and as we are having a bit of, or I'm having a bit of a break from YouTube for a little while I thought I'd share it with you folks as well. I've added in a few little bits that the supporters haven't seen, uh, just so they got something to watch as well. I did harvest the aquaponic spuds the other day as you saw, if you haven't there'll be a link up there and you can check it out. And I'll re be replacing them with this little grow system in the bathtub. But more on that in a future video. Supporters will see that first and then I'll post it to YouTube in a week or two as well. A few folks to see um, what that's all about. Uh, through the week here, just quickly I'll cover this then we'll get into an aquaponics update. Um, through the week we've also had the boys over to um, lay the concrete and set the posts for the driveway. Thank you very much for your um, work Ben. Really appreciate um, your, your commitment and the um, quality that you put into the job. And hopefully tomorrow they'll be back to hang the gates. And then it's just up to um, the girls and I to fill the rock back in and we'll worry about some drainage later because I have a feeling that could be an issue just looking at the rain that goes down there. But yeah, enough of that. Um, I'll stop um, yabbering on. We'll hop into the update and I'll catch you at the end of the vid. How's it going supporters? Just so I give you a bit of an update on what's going on if I can untangle this mic cord. Uh, just tossed in a little bit of feed for the fish. They seem to be um, hitting it a little bit um, better the last week or so. Um, yeah, this week I've just been pottering around upstairs and getting bits of the house sorted out. And do, I've done a little bit of work in here today that I thought I'd show you. I'm just showing you, uh, Grandma Chili has got a bit of a reprieve because she has a load of fruit on. Some little small ones over there. I'm actually thinking about chopping some of these larger ones back. Uh, just trying to keep her a little bit compact. I think our perpetual spinach is almost done. We have a little side branch coming out there so we might look at replacing her soon. And I noticed we've got a little bit of weeding to do. Oops, just broke off her stem. Uh, we have one of these milk thistles down here and also a load of tomatoes. And I dare say these are some of the um, blueberry tomatoes. So they're coming out because we don't want any more of them. And I have removed the rest of the plant that was growing over there. And all that is left in here now is the root. So I was going to um, try and pull this out this afternoon on camera. Give you a bit of a look. Hopefully it won't be too shaky or one-handed. This morning when I was going around I just noticed too many fruit fly strike on the fruit themselves. So I decided to chop them all off and remove the plant. Actually caught a couple of uh, fruit fly buzzing around there while I was at it. Um, just to give you a bit of a look at the roots on this one. Definitely a healthy plant. Going all the way, oh, about halfway down the bed. She did provide us with, you know, kilos of small fruit. Oh, there we go. There's a little compost worm there. Hopefully he'll find his way down into the bed. But I will just leave this on top. Try and get all the roots out, or as many as I can. Uh, this little, um, capsicum or chi um, sweet pepper here. Same thing has happened to it. We have fly strike. So I will cut that one open in a second. We'll have a look. I noticed on this one here we have a lot of the telltale marks as we do on some of these that almost made it off. Oh that one's definitely got some fruit fly in it. We'll open that up for a bit of a gander. And I dare say this one here will have some as well. If not, oh yeah it does. So I'm actually thinking I will pull this plant as well, seeing as it was a volunteer and I don't remember putting it in. So she can come out as well. Which means we've freed up a lot of this end of the bed for other bits and pieces. Oh this sweet potato, oh and a lot more of these um, little um, tomato seedlings, they can come out as well. Oh, this um, sweet potato isn't supposed to stay in here, it was just supposed to stay here to start off some slips for this season but as the rest of the garden hasn't been sorted out yet I might just let it um, stay there a little bit longer. And the aphids have all but disappeared on here. There's a couple, there's um, some dead ones that are stuck to the leaves there but there are some live ones over here. So I will be spraying the system again with some more dipole this afternoon and I'll put a half dose of the pure crop one in there. And um, yeah, this plant will get a bit of a spray this afternoon. Uh, the one on the deck is taking off nicely. I'm just going to remove these guys just in case there are any fruit fly and they decide to um, 
go down and pupate in the bed. The um, nasturtiums over here, they've taken off nicely. Got some nice flowers in there. But I do have a feeling we're getting mites on these guys. I definitely know we've got mites on the potatoes. I can tell by the bronzing underneath the leaves and the way they're curled in. So, I was actually going to ask you folks, what do you think? Do you reckon we pull the potatoes now? They've only been in for around about eight weeks. Or do you reckon I just uh, persevere and try and keep spraying them to see if we can um, get a half decent crop? But the cabbages, they are being hit by um, freaking um, cabbage butterflies. Just have to change hands, but obviously the last little light dipole didn't work too well on this cabbage. And this is one that's partially exposed. Just looking at it, I don't think that's a cabbage butterfly. I reckon that's one of those blooming um, buster caterpillars. They tend to be a little bit more voracious. And over here, the others look to be doing okay. Um, they're heading up fine. So what I might do is I might actually come back and I'll pull this one out and have a good look for the blooming caterpillar. Uh, the others, as I said, they're doing fine. Haven't seen any hassles with them. I did see a small crusted caterpillar on this one this morning. If we can bring him into focus there. And I squished it. So I definitely need to get out and um, give these guys a spray. At least right down in the heart of the cabbage itself. The other thing I did while I was working on the system was I harvested the cos or romaine lettuce flower that we had growing out the side of the grow bed there. Uh, these guys set a lot of little flowers on the flower head and in each little flower you can probably get round about 12 or so seeds. So this little flower head all I did was bang it inside a bucket and as you can see I've collected hundreds, probably thousands of seeds enough to do us and the parents and our mates uh, for the next coming year at least. So some of those lettuce seeds went to my parents. I've got some set aside for Sam and also Hucho. Uh, but more about uh, meeting up with Hucho towards the end of the video. And I've also got a load that I sowed out in the bed above the sump tank. Uh, just after a nice little thin line to replace where I pulled out some bok choy. Just back around here at the fish. They look to have polished that off while we were chatting. So I'll toss a little bit more in and see how that goes. Um, the sump tank, I was also just topping it up as well. I did um, clean the filters and everything this morning. Basically I stuffed up um, with the radial flow settler and took a little bit too much water out of there. Uh, too much for the um, digester here to handle. As you can see she's fairly full. So what I'm doing is just letting that um, settle out, the solids in there settle out. And tomorrow morning I'll just decant out uh, the clean stuff from the top. Pop it straight into this grow bed. And then I put the rest of those solids back into the um, biodigester. We're on right now to put these bells back on. So I will do that quickly and then we'll cut open these uh, fruit. So I noticed there's already one little uh, maggot that's fallen out. Just break this open, don't even really need to cut it. Oh, there's a lot of liquid in there. Might be able to make out that little fella just crawling around in there. That is a uh, Queensland fruit fly. There were some others that went hiding. There we go, they're down in the juice. I don't know if you can sort of make them out down there. Um, crack this one. Oh, there we go. There's one on the outside of this one here. Let's flip him in there. Let's rip this one open. Ah, there we go. You can see them just crawling around on the flesh themselves. Look at that fella. Throwing a bit of a fit. So definitely all inflected, infected, infested I should say. So we'll be um, tossing them all out. Let's break open this one as well. And there we go, in this green one. Oh, and you just saw one jump before, that's something they tend to do. There goes another one. Um, they tend to jump um, when they uh, feel threatened. So I've got them jumping everywhere here. So I'm going to have to just um, squish these ones, I think. And the one that jumped on the ground, if I can find it. Ah, oh, the ants will probably get that, but yeah. Um, all these capsicums are pretty much all um, lost to the Queensland fruit fly. I mean, if we were really, really desperate, we'd eat them, of course. Um, but yeah, I think we'll um, just um, knock these guys on the head and get rid of them. 
Just quickly with those Queensland fruit fly, uh, they will strike these guys as well once they get a little bit of colour onto them. So I'll just do what I did last year and I mentioned in my aquaponics pest control video, I'll just put some little bags over there and that will stop the fruit fly from getting access to the um, chilies and blowing them. Uh, strangely enough, they don't hit our small little sunshine chilies, just these RG Amarillos. So one more thing before I go folks, other than showing you some pretty nasturtium flowers, is that I mislabeled these plants here. I've been calling them perennial or perpetual chard or spinach or silver beet. They're not, they're actually a white beet. And as you can tell from the bulbs down the bottom there, rather mature, so they're going to be tough and a little bit stringy, fibrous. So we're just going to continue to harvest them and treat them like a chard. We pretty much all think they taste like a chard and have been using them as such and stir fries and bits and pieces. So yeah, um, just thought I'd point that out. Uh, it's one of those plants you can use both sections. You can use the greens as well as the uh, root crop. There we go, we've even got a little security guard on the uh, chard or the beetroot I should say itself. Uh, so hopefully he'll uh, take care of any of those cluster caterpillars that like to feast on this. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a catch up on what's going on in the aquaponics system. And if you haven't checked out that potato harvest video, do check it out. I'll, there'll be a link in the description and one will pop up at the end here. Uh, it was a very surprising harvest. Uh, just a little bit of a heads up for you folks who stick around to the end. Uh, looks like I might be um, catching up with Hucho. He's an Australian hydroponics grower here on YouTube. Uh, so please go check out Hucho's channel. I'm uh, not sure what we'll be talking about yet. I've got to get in contact with him this weekend and um, we'll see what's going to happen there. But yeah, um, do go suss out his channel. Give you a bit of homework to do before we post the video. Uh, but anyway, I will pretty much all leave it there. I do thank you all for coming along and sussing out the videos. Uh, don't forget, I've also got the guide and thank you to everyone who has purchased a copy of our online interactive aquaponics beginner's guide. Um, there will be a link to that down below and the little card will pop up here at the end as well if you're interested in checking that out. Many thanks to the folks supporting us on the YouTube membership channel, our program I should say, and also the Farm Your Yard, Farm Your Yard website. Um, I do hope you're enjoying the content that I am posting over there folks. Uh, but I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics is booming and I will catch you next video. Cheers all and happy growing. Just a bit of an update folks. Ben finished off the um, gates the next day and Kira, Bianca and I over the weekend um, emptied all the rock from around the old aquaponics area uh, in between and on the outside of these tracks. So we're really chuffed about that. Um, we do need to buy in a little bit more rock just to bring the level up. Now, the one thing we were hoping was it was going to slow the water down and stop it from um, chewing out the back, um, the back lawn area. Uh, obviously, we need to improve the drainage a little bit down the end here. So what we're thinking about doing is digging a dry well in the centre here. I was just going to dig one on the other side. I mentioned that to some supporters the other day. Um, but I'm actually going to dig down here, uh, add a dry well in, and then have that running underground through some slotted ag pipe to around about where that rubble is that we need to um, uh, dispose of. We're going to have another dry well there um, inside a contoured um, sort of swale area with some bananas growing behind it. So um, that's all happening down the track, but Bianca and I pretty much all decided we need to dig this one out uh, fairly soon. Um, yeah, so just something extra, not really gardening or aquaponics related, but I thought it might interest a few of you folks. And yes, I've reclaimed a bit of the aquaponics area and we can um, start organising, moving the system from where it is down to there in a couple of weeks time. All going well.